Ajavir House of Culture is renamed the Ajavir House of Culture, Leandro Fernandez de Moratín, in homage to the author of El Chi de las Ninas, a play, a key piece of Spanish neoclassicism, where the author highlights mouth of one of his characters the name of Ajavir for the first time in the history of literature. Leandro Fernandez de Moratín wrote El Chi de las Ninas in 1801, but it would not be released until January 24, 1806. El Chi de las Ninas was not only a resounding success with the public, it was the most widely accepted work of your time. The play was performed for 26 days in a row and attracted more than 37,000 spectators, a figure equivalent to a quarter of the adult population of Madrid. To the success in the tables was added the editorial. All the action takes place in the passage room in an inn in Alcalá de Henares. Leandro Fernández de Moratín was born in Madrid on March 10, 1760, from a noble Asturian family on his father's side, also a poet, playwright and lawyer Nicolás Fernández de Moratín. His mother was Isadora Carbo Cond, with roots in Pastrana, Guadalajara. He grew up in an environment where literary discussions were frequent, since his father Nicolás was a man dedicated to letters and the founder and regular Tertullian of the Fonda de San Sebastián. At the age of four, he fell ill with smallpox, which affected his character, making him shy. He also became a compulsive reader of classical Spanish poetry, Don Quixote, Lazarillo and historical works such as that of Father Juan de Mariana and the Wars of Granada by Diego Hurtado de Mendoza. At first he followed the profession of jeweler of his paternal grandfather. At the age of 19, in 1779, he had already won second prize for poetry in the public competition organized by the Royal Spanish Academy with the heroic romance, La Toma de Granada por los Reyes Catalicos. In 1787, and thanks to the friendship of Jovellanos, he undertook a trip to Paris as secretary to the Count of Cabarrus, then in charge of a diplomatic mission that sought to advise Louis XVI on anti-revolutionary measures. The experience was very profitable for the young writer. For example, he met the neoclassical playwright Carlo Goldoni. Under the protection of Florida Blanca, he then grants him the mercy of a benefit of 300 ducats on the Archbishopric of Burgos. Moratin is ordained first tonsure by the Bishop of Tagast, an essential requirement to enjoy the benefit. Shortly after Godoy came to power, he achieved the protection of the favorite, who helped him to premiere his comedies and increased his income with other ecclesiastical sinecures, 3,000 ducats in a parish in Montoro and 600 on the mitre of Oviedo. With these incomes he manages a discreet income that allows him to dedicate himself only to writing plays. Retired in Pastrana, birthplace of his mother, he retouched several of his works. He traveled with a scholarship provided by Godoy for five years. In Europe, France again, England, Belgium, Germany, Switzerland and Italy, returning to Madrid in 1797 to occupy the position of Secretary of Interpretation of Languages, which had been left vacant by the death of one of the Samaniego brothers. This allowed him to live without economic hardship, although he would have wanted the position of Director of the Theatres. His contemporaries see in him an Afrancesado who has greatly benefited from the hated favorite Manuel de Godoy. He is appointed member of the Board of Directors and Reform of the Theatres, 1799, but his dissensions with the director of this organization make him leave the position disappointed after three months. In that same year, his Aragonese friend Francisco de Goya painted the first of the two portraits he dedicated to him, to which the poet reciprocated with a grateful silver. In 1803 he premiered, El Baron, and in 1804, Le Prude, which were well received. But it was on January 24, 1806 when he achieved the greatest success of his career, one of the greatest in the theatre at that time, with the premiere, attended by Manuel Godoy, at the Coliseum de la Cruz, of El Chi de las Ninas, which is replaced for 20 days until the closing of the theatres for Lent and of which four editions are made. The Arrangers' mutiny in 1808 produced the fall of Godoy. He fled to Vittoria and from there he returned as Frenchified, for which his property was confiscated. But José Bonaparte seizes power and in 1811 he was appointed chief librarian of the Royal Library by the new monarch, who reigned under the name of José I. His contribution was to make a new catalogue of loose files. 
In 1817 fears of the Inquisition led him back to France on the pretext of taking the waters at Aix-en-Provence, then he goes to Montpellier, Paris, and Bologna, Italy. The success of the pronouncement of the liberal Raphael del Rigo in January 1820 restored the Cadiz constitution and he returned hopefully to Barcelona at the end of 1820, where his friends got him the position of press judge. But the plague breaks out in the city and Moratin flees to Bayonne in 1821, will never return to Spain. He finally settles in Bordeaux with the family of Manuel Silvella, his faithful friend, there he meets Goya again, who paints a second magnificent portrait of him. His letters from this time reflect more bitterness than nostalgia. In 1825 he suffered a stroke, and again followed the Silvella family to Paris, where he died on June 21, 1828. He left behind a granddaughter of Silvella himself. He was buried in the Perry Lachaise Cemetery, but his remains were transferred to Madrid on October 5, 1855 and now rest in a joint mausoleum with Goya, Donoso Cortés and Melendez Valdés, the work of Ricardo Belba, in the San Isidro Cemetery. From Madrid, 